Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, we start with a segment about D.K. Clark, his military history, and research about Beecher Island. Then join us for our weekly outdoor segment featuring the kangaroo rat. Next, we'll learn about the history of mazes, followed by a poem from Ron Wilson, and we'll end with a look at the song, My Kansas Home. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Welcome to Kansas Gateway. After 27 years, Lieutenant Colonel Dennis D.K. Clark retired from the Army in 1993 having deployed 158 times and participating in combat operations in Southeast Asia, Europe, Afghanistan, Grenada, and Iraq. DK has been knighted five times in four different countries. In addition to commanding various armored units, he visited hundreds of battlefields on four continents to understand the nature and history of warfare. Using this knowledge and expertise, DK developed numerous training scenarios and authored war plans such as General Norman Schwarzkopf's plan in Operation Desert Storm. Over the next 11 years, D.K. traveled the globe extensively to train and mentor, coach, the staffs of two- and three-star generals, training the officers in complex problem-solving and decision-making. During this time, he developed the Army's standard scenario for warfighting that is still being used to assess our Army's combat readiness. From 2004 until his retirement in 2015, D.K. was an associate professor at the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College in Fort Leavenworth. He participated in the complete redesign of the course and for three years was Chief of Curriculum Development for the Center of Army Tactics. As the chief, he authored dozens of training scenarios. During D.K.'s last six years, he was the Senior Tactics Instructor in the Army. He advised several governmental agencies. Lieutenant Colonel Clark is retired again and lives in Lansing with his wife, Melinda. They have two sons and four grandchildren. DK is a member of the Fort Wallace Memorial Association, a guardian of Fort Wallace, the Society of Friends of Historic Fort Hayes, the Company of Military Historians, and numerous other professional societies and organizations. About 14 years ago, on his way back from Custer Battlefield, DK visited Beecher Island State Park. As he had done most of his life, it was not just a chance visit. DK had researched Colonel George A. Sandy Forsyth's 1868 campaign thoroughly and envisioned what had taken place along the Arikaree. Within minutes of arriving at the state park, DK knew the battle had not occurred there. Over the following years, he conducted further research, including satellite imagery, built a significant library, investigated Eugene Carr's 1869 campaign, and an accidental discovery of a misfiled survey map at the State Archives in Topeka, which led him to the actual site more than seven miles to the west of the State Park. This led to the question, what happened at the State Park location identified by the farmer's wife? Solving this mystery led D.K. to some incredible treasures along the research road, finds he will share at the Fort Wallace Museum at 2 p.m. on March 18th. He is excited to return and speak at Fort Wallace about one of his great passions, soldiers and warriors engaging in irregular warfare on the Great Plains. I've had the pleasure of knowing D.K. and working with him on occasion, and for those of you who are unacquainted with him or his research, I guarantee you to be impressed. DK is the personification of an officer and a gentleman, and few things give me as much pride and humility as DK's calling me friend. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.
As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Nevermore do you walk the earth, his spirit rides here still. Roman knows the wild wind blows Roman knows your legend grows no one knows if we'll see your lights again this segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley kangaroo rats well because they look like little kangaroos hopping across the road in your headlights yes they hop they can in fact hop a distance of six feet nine feet on a good day this remarkable rodent can even change direction mid-hop they are bipedal meaning they use two feet instead of all four they are four-toed little beasts with big hind legs small front legs and relatively large heads the tails of kangaroo rats are longer than both their bodies and their heads. Another notable feature of kangaroo rats are their fur-lined cheek pouches, which are used for storing food. Their coloration varies from cinnamon buff to dark gray depending on the species. The Ord kangaroo rat found in the western half of Kansas is cinnamon buff. They are rarely seen during the day, burrowing in sandy soil till nightfall when they appear to be food for nearly every other creature on the plains. Coyotes, foxes, badgers, weasels, owls, and every slithering snake imaginable feast on the little fellers. Since they primarily feed on seeds, they gather as many as they can and stuff them into their little pouches. Thus, they spend their time outside the burrow gathering and hoarding and wait till they get back to the nest to begin digesting their haul. They do not need much water, instead breaking down seeds with their metabolism making them ideal survivors in the arid landscapes of the high plains. They can also conserve water by lowering their metabolic rate, which reduces loss of water through their skin and respiratory system. Another fascinating feature of these little guys is their complex burrow system. The burrows have separate chambers for specific purposes like sleeping, living, and food storage. The spacing of the burrows depends on the number of kangaroo rats and the abundance of food. Kangaroo rats also live in colonies that range from six to several hundred dens. The burrow of a kangaroo rat is important in providing protection from the harsh desert environment. To maintain a constant temperature and relative humidity in their burrows, kangaroo rats plug the entrances with soil during the day. When the outside temperature is too hot, a kangaroo rat stays in its cool, humid burrow and leaves it only at night. To reduce loss of moisture through respiration when sleeping, a kangaroo rat buries its nose in its fur to accumulate a small pocket of moist air. The next time you see the buff-colored little rodent crossing the road, you might take a moment to marvel at what an interesting little creature he is. Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center, right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70, after all, is America's Main Street, and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day, and I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me. You know, the guys who are talking about the big elf they just bagged or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me. And they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley.
Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about employee safety and work comp coverage. On your farm, do you ask your friends to come help? Are they considered employees or neighbors helping neighbors? Did you know that you can be held responsible just as if it's a work comp accident? Give me a call, we can discuss. 316-945-6733. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. The land here tells a story. It offers up fossils of extinct beasts, ruins of native villages, farmsteads and battlegrounds. Walk the shore of historic Scott Lake and imagine the native peoples on the hillsides above you. Listen, you can hear their voices on the wind. Discover the secrets of Scott County on the ground where history happened or in the comfort of the El Quartalejo Museum and the Jerry Thomas Gallery. I promise you'll find an amazing story. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Although the true origins of the maize probably go back to Neolithic times, the earliest mazes we know of were actually parts of architectural monuments built in Egypt and on Crete about 4,000 years ago. The most impressive of these architectural mazes were probably part of the Egyptian labyrinth, a vast palace complex located on the shores of a lake, seven days' journey up the Nile from the pyramids, the labyrinth was built by Pharaoh Amenemhet III in the 19th century B.C. It consisted of thousands of rooms and 12 large maze-like courtyards, which were probably intended to keep out unwelcome visitors. Amenemhet was fascinated by mazes, and he also created a fantastic life-size maze inside his nearby pyramid to thwart tomb robbers. According to the only two ancient historians who saw it with their own eyes, the Egyptian labyrinth was more impressive than the pyramids at Giza. Although archaeologists have found the site it once stood upon, nothing of this mysterious monument remains today. Another well-known architectural maze may have been found at the Minoan Palace at Gnosis on Crete. Built around the same time as the Egyptian labyrinth, Gnosis was a vast interconnected complex of small corridors, staircases, and private courts, and once consisted of perhaps 1,300 rooms spread over three acres of land. Spiral and labyrinth designs on coins and pottery, as well as hundreds of bullhorns carved in stone and wall paintings of young men leaping and charging over bulls can be found at the site. These are intriguing clues, since according to Greek legend, the Minotaur was a half-man and half-bull monster trapped within a labyrinth. Gives you a whole new appreciation for the corn maze, doesn't it? Sand Strew, veterinarian in Western Iowa. I have a veterinary clinic and uh, started doing stem cell therapy on dogs in August of 2014. And after the first two dogs, after three weeks, I saw such dramatic results. I said, hey, I have arthritis. I have joints really need this help. Where can I go to get this done? I had stem cell therapy done in November of 2014 on my finger joints 
my hip and the ball of my left foot, uh, all of which I'd had real severe problems with. Saw a pretty dramatic uh, improvement in a short amount of time. I would certainly recommend that somebody don't wait until I'm in the position that I was in with the d damage already done to my joints. I encourage veterinarians to use it for their animals, and I encourage anybody who sees this video, if you have need, get in contact with these people because this is a phenomenal place to have this done. Mark your calendars for Tuesday, March 26th in Beloit, where the first ever Stock Growers Field Day will be held by K-State Research and Extension, the Kansas Livestock Association, and the Kansas Bull Test. The event will be highlighted by a market outlook from Cattle Facts, as well as a presentation from well-known reproductive physiologist, Dr. Rick Funston, where he speaks about increasing production efficiency. From there, we'll also play host to over 30 ag-based businesses in the trade show and enjoy breakout sessions where producers can listen to speakers on topics that apply directly to their operation. This event should cater to producers of all size and scale and offer a social aspect as well, so we look forward to seeing you there for the inaugural Stock Growers Field Day in North Central Kansas. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. A cowboy has a lot of dirty, messy jobs, and oftentimes that involves the south end of a cow going north. But when we're sorting cattle, there's a very important job, and that is the job of the gate man. It's kind of a thankless job because he has to make some split-second decisions. In his honor, this poem is entitled, The Gate Man. There are certain thankless jobs that you encounter in this life, like a policeman given parking tickets, or perhaps the farmer's wife who was sent to town for parts. Oh, it's about yay big. We don't know the model number, but it looks like a thingamajig. Those jobs are truly thankless, but among the cowboy clan, there is no job so thankless as that of the gate man. When we go to sorting cattle, then the gate man's simple job is to open and shut the gate when we separate the mob. But that task ain't nearly as simple as it sounds. He must decide in a split second with chaos all around. He may have angry steers a barreling straight toward him or a crazy cow that will dodge or jump or kick upon a whim. He gets splattered by manure and will have the gate tore from his hand, but he must do the job just right to meet the boss's demand. His head may be spinning from the contrary directions about. One cowboy says to stop the calf and the other says turn him out. So the gate man's job is thankless, but he can always protect his fate by saying to his critics, all right, it's your turn to man the gate. Happy trails. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. 
The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues, improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today, we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if you're held liable, in any type of accident, the judgment can claim your assets. Please give me a call so we can discuss 316-945-6733. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm at yet another one of my jobs. I'm sitting in the Wakini Livestock office this morning, finishing up some work with Dr. Jake. And I know that we have shared a lot of musicians with you. And no matter where I am, you know, a little music in the background sure makes the day go better, doesn't it? Makes the time fly, makes your spirit soar. And I love it when our fans share their music with us. You are going to love this next song that Fulton Calvary sent to me on our Facebook page. Thank you, Fulton. He wrote the song, and the vocals are from Terry Wright. And they did a fantastic job, as I'm sure you will agree. My Kansas home. I can hear my mother calling out the kitchen screen door And the cottonwoods are blooming like a snowy winter storm There's a rusty windmill turning on my grandfather's farm Where the wheat smells of memory and the sky goes on and on Lord, how I love my Kansas home I can see the stars in the open sky Hear the train as it whistles by Lord, how I love my Kansas home
Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Red ripe tomatoes and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.